gonna be this system D four section under counter refrigerator. So I've got the covers off. System D is in David. Kind of hard to see, but the side glass is flashing. So it looks like low on charge. Go ahead and put some gauges on it. 404A. It's about 50 degrees outside right now, 48, somewhere in there. So we're definitely low on charge. It's kind of hard to see right now, but the sight glass is still flashing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off the compressor, equalize the gauges out, and then go downstairs and do a leak check. More than likely, the leak is gonna be down in the evaporator coils. So we're looking at system D as in David, four section under counter. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut off the breaker. D. And we'll come over here. System's off. I'm gonna go ahead and open up both sides and equalize the pressures out. That way we can uh have some pressure on the low side and the high side to do a leak check downstairs. Cardboard and a kneeling pad or knee pads would be your best friend. Keep that prep table funk smell off your arms. I got two of them opened up. Leak detector turned on, warming it up, keep it out of the box, that way it doesn't start in a leaky area. We just wait for it to kick on.
in that coil. It's kind of difficult to get back in there and see with the camera, but it's in the U bends on the coil. But very important is I'm not going to stop with this one. I've got three more to go. Guarantee we're going to have multiple leaks on this thing. Notice how I swept the leak detector up top because the refrigerant's going to fall. So I checked the penetrations going out of the box to make sure it wasn't coming out of there. It isn't. So then swept from the top down. I get a bigger hit at the bottom, but I'm also getting hits at the top, but it's all in those U-bins over there.
I spin that so that way I don't get it all put together and find out that the blade is hitting the floor. I've learned that from experience. Back up on the roof, uh, leak checked all the evaporator coils, found multiple leaks and multiple coils, but I'm still not going to stop there either. We're going to come onto the roof and we're going to leak check the condenser, the compressor area, the whole rack for that system. Pull off all these top panels, well the ones pertaining to this box, but I think it's going to be that one right there. And then leak check everything corresponding with that. In order to do that though, I'm going to have to shut the whole rack down. I'm going to be cautious here because some of this rack controls their ice machine condensers and I don't want to just shut off the whole thing without going downstairs and shutting off the ice machines because then they would go off on high head pressure. So I'm going to shut off everything except for the ice machine condensers. That way I get all my air movement going. So That's that. Now my ice machine is built into here somewhere so I know it's not system A. These two are condenser fans. These two are ice machines. So I'm gonna shut off the condenser fans, leave the ice machines on. So now everything's off in the rack except for the ice machine condensers. And then I'll just go and take all these panels off. Remember we wanna power up the leak detector away from the potential leak source. That way it doesn't zero out on the leak. Make sure you keep it away while you're powering it up.
check all the welds I can get to. Rotor lock valve. Dryer. Over here. Our system that's our headmaster. Nothing. You can see the different condensers, says system D too. See from the top it almost looks like it's the same. But you can see the split in the frame. So for those that are not as experienced with this, I'm ready to turn this system back on, well the entire rack back on, but you're going to do it in stages for a couple reasons. Um, number one, if there's a problem with any one of the circuits, by turning them all on at once and then you know flipping the main on right there, you wouldn't know if there was a pro which, which one and you would have to isolate and check them out. So say for instance there was a direct short with something. Um, or say for instance when you're putting a panel back on you shorted out a wire it, it, It's just gonna waste some time. So if you shut it off at the main turn everything off Turn the main on then turn them on one at a time also so you don't overload anything uh, You can also especially in the really hot days in the summertime you can uh, create a spike in their energy usage, so we're gonna turn them on one at a time Give them a couple seconds. They may not even come on, but just one at a time. I usually count to three or five or something. So everything's back on. Check all the time clocks. Currently 9 a.m., so. That one's good, that one's a little off. Let's go over here. There, 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 there. We're pretty good on our times. Okay. It's also good when you've had the rack shut off for a little while, it's a good time to be able to come through and check sight glasses because more than likely everything's gonna be running. So I may not be here for everything else, but I'm gonna come over here and if they're running, I'm gonna check the side glasses. Like this one's not running yet. This one's running. Got a clear side glass. Okay, so I'm just gonna feel which ones. The system D, you can't really see, but it's flashing. That's the one we're working on. This one right here is running. Nice and clear. And this one right here is running. Nice and clear. So again, it's just uh, because I had it off for 20 minutes or so and the restaurant's just getting here starting to work, um, it's a good time to check the side glasses if they're running. So turn the breakers on, give it three, four minutes for everything just to get up and running and then check your side glasses. They should be clear. Okay, so this is our system. We gotta put some refrigerant in here. So we do have some leaks downstairs. We're going to top it off for now. We're going to submit some quotes to uh, the appropriate people at facilities, get them to approve it. So for now, we're just going to top it off and uh, make sure we're good to go until then.
heading out to a service call on some cook's drawers that are not working at this particular restaurant. For a little recap, we were called on the cook's drawers not working. When we arrived, the unit was at 50 degrees, 55 degrees. The system was sounding like it was starving the evaporator coils. I could hear it. I don't know if you can kind of hear it in the video or not, but it was starving the evaporator coils feeding vapor to the TXVs. Went on the roof, the refrigerant pressures were definitely low, the sight glass was flashing, and yes, it was low on charge. Topped off the charge, got the proper amount of refrigerant charge in there, went down and leak checked all the evaporator coils. Found that we have multiple leaks and multiple evaporator coils. Also have got one of the fan motors that's kind of making a metallic sound that's going bad. We're gonna submit a quote to replace evaporator coils liquid line dryer and sight glass, evaporator fan motor, and go from there. The leaks weren't pissing gas out, so it's not like it's gonna run out overnight. They do need to make a decision within about a week or two, because if they don't, we will be back out to have to top off the charge. But other than that, they're good to go for now. I was very cautious about, as throughout the service call, and I didn't really have video of this, but as I'm going through these service calls, I try to keep the management in the loop the entire time. This is a very busy restaurant, so they needed me basically to come in at five in the morning realistically, which I didn't. I got in there at you know 7.30. But, so if that's the case, or when that's the case, I try to keep them involved so they know I just don't disappear onto the roof for an hour. You know, I, I try to do things methodically so that way it makes sense. So the first thing I did when I got there, went downstairs, looked at the temperature controllers, sounded like it was starving, I already had a hunch, put my gauges on the unit, found it was low on charge, shut everything down on the condenser, shut the compressor off, equalized the system out and immediately went down and leak checked the evaporator coils. That way I was done with that part. So once I leak checked the evaporator coils and I found multiple leaks, I put everything back together, made sure all the fan motors were working, turned it back on. That way I was out of their way. And the rest of the time on the roof, topping off the charge, checking the rack, all that stuff, I didn't have to come back downstairs for it. They did in the middle of me working on the roof, come up there and ask if they could start loading the box up. And I just put it in their hands. I said, look, it's not down to temperature yet. I had, at that point I had already had it running, but it wasn't down to temperature yet. I said, it's up to you guys. I do not need to get into that box again, but it's not down to temperature. So I would suggest that you guys wait till the box is down to temp, but it's, you know, you guys can do what you want with it. And they waited. So I was able to see the box come down to temperature by the time I topped off the charge. And another thing too, just because, you know, the first coil I went into, I found a, a pretty big leak. I didn't stop there. Don't just stop at the first leak keep going through the system. The only thing I didn't check on that system was the line set that's running through the walls in the attic because that's kind of impractical. That would be a last resort. But I checked every coil. I checked the entire refrigeration rack. I checked the compressor area. I checked everything. Okay, don't just stop at the one leak. But other than that, found, you know, we, we diagnosed the entire system that way. So then when I give them a quote, I can be confident in saying this is what's wrong with this box, which I will. And other than that, that's it. On to the next call.